Hey, Mo in Beaumont, California. See more better with freeprescriptionlenses.com. And today I am going to cut the invisible bifocal with Transitions Extra Active Green and Crizal Anti Glare for your Ray Ban 52. Hang on, what is this? 6286. Six, I need some new glasses. Color 2509. That's what I was going to say. And the 54 eye size. Let me take everything out. Of the original packaging as Ray Bans it sends it to me. Your hard shell uh, Italian leather Ray Ban case. You know how you can tell it's hard? That's how. <laughs> Ow, that did hurt. I need to practice that before doing that live. So, your Ray Ban case, your Ray Ban cleaning cloth, the star of the show, the main attraction. Of course, it comes with a little plastic sleeve on the left temple to protect the temples from rubbing together during shipping because these are shipped. This is the Ray-Ban Light Force, made in Italy. That's Little Italy, New York. No, actually, I think it's the Big Italy overseas. But again, this is the Ray-Ban 6286, color 2509, which is the matte black in the 54 eye size. I believe this frame comes in two sizes and several colors, but super lightweight frame. Again, that's why it's part of the Light Force series. And let me begin by taking out the original demo lenses of which you will receive all the manufacturer's original packaging. I'm going to take your frame, put it into the tracing element of my edger. But before I hit start, I want to program the shape into the computer. You are Secret Agent 1286 because years from now, should you ever need new lenses for this frame, I can pull the shape up on the computer and mail you just the lenses and they'll be cut to the shape that you can install. So a little stylus is going around and tracing the inside bevel of the right side of the frame before doing the same thing on the left. Here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed in quality. If you buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame, you'll receive one free pair of clear single vision prescription lenses. My receipt has my federal ID tax number, so if you have vision insurance or flex dollars, you will get reimbursed for this purchase. And in just a moment, that shape will pull up on the computer. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm going to take that out. I'm done with I'm so done with you, frame. And your pupillary distance for your right eye is 34. Also happens to be the same for the left, but I'm going to move that on to the next screen. The computer starts at 32.5, so I'm going to tap the plus button a few times till we get to 34. I want to raise the height up the optical center where your invisible bifocal, progressive, multifocal lens. It goes by several names. No line bifocal. And I'm going to change the layout. This is a single vision screen. I want to bring up the screen known as the layout screen for a progressive. So I've gone ahead and I've put the dots in advance on your lenses. Cleaned off the yellow paint that comes with it. I need to attach two blocks to your lenses. So I need some two double-sided adhesive stickers. The black side is the sticky side. You don't believe me? I'll show you. Watch this. Bloop. See how that's stuck on there? Kids, don't try this at home. Sticky side. Bloop. Stuck on there. Now on the back is a silver button. That is a magnet. It's going to attach itself to another magnet there in the arm. Let me pull the paper away because I told you these were double-sided adhesive stickers. Look at that. Sticky, sticky. Line up the magnet. And we're going to line up your lens. The blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. Your eye is just above that and inset. That black dot right there. These other two dots tells me that the lens is oriented in there just perfectly because of your astigmatism. Which I'll explain a little later. That is, I just want to always check to make sure the lens is large enough, which it is. But I always like to see that ahead of time. Hit the button. The arm comes down and places the block onto the right lens. We're going to do the same thing for the lens that ain't right. Well, which will be played. The, the, the part of the L lens will be played by left tonight. Pull the paper away to make the black side sticky. Line up the magnet. Same pupillary distance, same optical center height. If it were different, I would change that. But because it's not, so I ain't gonna. So, put the dot there. Line up those other two dots. Hit the button. The arm comes down and places the block onto the left lens. Now this is the edger. This is what's going to do all the work while I run my mouth that costs $40,000. It weighs 200 pounds. I recommend everyone go out, get their own, put it on your kitchen counter. Then you can cut your own lenses at home and you will need this guy with the two thumbs and the bad jokes to do it for you. But the actual cutting wheel is this diamond crusted wheel. Okay, zirconian, uh, <laughs> I don't know, moissanite, moissanite cutting wheel. It's going to grind away your lens material until it's the final size. It's going to take this and make it look like that. 
Now this wheel in the center that has that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the V-shaped bevel onto the lens so it stays inside the bevel of the frame. I'm going to wake up the computer. Secret Agent 1286. These are polycarbonate lenses. If they were plastic, high index plastic, or Travex, I would select that. I'm not going to polish the edge of the lens because it won't be seen. I'm not going to put a safety bevel on the front convex surface of the lens because it won't be protruding from the frame. But I will put a safety bevel on the rear concave surface of the lens just in case any portion of the lens protrudes from the back of this lens frame, which I doubt it will, and come in contact with the cheek, which I double doubt that it will because these are metal frames which has nose pads which creates more separation than a plastic frame like I'm wearing. But I'll show you that, which frame I'm wearing a little bit later. Guess which color I'm wearing today. So I'm going to press the sticker on there firmly. Place the magnet into another magnet there into the chuck. Or by now, you know, I like to call it the Charles. Because I just don't know this machine well enough to call it chuck. I'm going to keep telling that joke until you guys laugh. So you better laugh and I'll quit telling it. So I'm going to hit the green arrow at the start. The door closes. A nice little dirty door, might I add. If I knew I was going to have company over, I would have cleaned that. So the clamp shuts, the lens is now going to be traced by two white styluses, making sure that it's large enough to go into the frame, and it is. And then the old carpenter saying measure twice, cut once, is measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. And also remember the saying, soup is good food. <laughs> but, uh, so if you see light flickering in the background, that is water there to catch the optical sawdust. Polycarbonate lenses cut dry where plastic, high-index plastic, and Trivex lenses cut wet. Meaning that water sprays onto the lens for the duration of the cutting cycle. Now water will spray onto your polycarbonate lenses for the last 20 seconds just to wash away any optical debris you may happen to see beginning to form on the edge of your lenses. But as I mentioned, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. These are high impact ballistics grade lenses. If they weren't, could I do this? <laughs> um, don't worry, that's part of the lens that will be cut away and your lens has a very strong scratch coating. But polycarbonate lenses are 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. They are virtually unbreakable. They have they're also very impact resistant as I mentioned they will it's the same lens material that our soldiers wear overseas in combat zones to protect their eyes from shrapnel and flying debris it also has 100% UVA and UVB protection built into the lens we know what the Sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin there in Beaumont California this is permanent and never needs to be reapplied every couple hours when you're in direct exposure to the Sun so you got the Transitions Extra Active Green. Now Transitions Extra Active are available in gray and brown for a certain price. The green costs $20 more. How you like that? Um, so, because they're so new, they're only made in one lab and the costs run higher when you pick that one. Now you also have the Crizal Anti-Glare. Anti-Glare is three features in one. The first feature is it reduces glare when driving at night, particularly driving at night in the rain, but from street lights, stop lights, computer screens, overhead, fluorescence and such. Now water spraying on the lens, so it tells me it's in the last 20 seconds. The little lever is coming out. At the end of that lever is a spinning disc. That's what's going to apply the safety bevel just to smooth out any rough surfaces left over from the cutting cycle. For the second part of the anti-glare coating, it's an anti-reflection lens, meaning it reduces reflection. So when someone's looking at you, they're not looking at their reflection in your glasses. Plus, if someone takes a picture with a flash, or if you take a selfie, which I'm going to ask you to do, Mo, if someone, if you take a selfie, you won't see the reflection of the camera in your lens. In just a moment, I'll open the door with my mind. If you like that? I can do other things with my mind. I can melt ice with my mind. I just have to stare at it for a couple hours, but then I can melt it. In room temperature. This time of year, where everyone's getting belted with snow, a humongous snowstorm that could dump up to 40 inches of snow here on the East Coast. I think in Beaumont, California, you don't have to worry about that. But it's coming through the Midwest. It's going to dump 40 inches of snow and then get down and leave some crazy like 200 million people in freezing weather. So, but hey, that's winter for you, right? So, the other thing about the anti-glare is that it takes... The machine that applies it takes over 24 hours to vaporize nine different coatings onto your lens. So because of the time and the expense, they put the industry's hardest scratch coating on there. That's why I wasn't worried when I did that. To protect your time and investment, the only thing I am worried about 
as I grab my Phillips screwdriver is and do the old lefty loosey. I do not want to drop this screw, so I'm not going to take it out all the way. I'm going to keep it this side up. I don't want to turn it this way so the screw could fall out. I'm going to keep it like that. Tuck the lens in at the outside corner and push, using my thumbs, push in right there. Knowing that the, the polycarbonate unbreakable material will not be compromised at all by pushing in there. Tighten the screw. That's done. Let's go ahead and start cutting the left. Flip that over to L. Line up the magnet there in the Charles, the Charleston, the Chucky Baby, the Chuckarama, the Sir Chuckalicious. And, alright, someone send me another name where I can, a uh, derivative of uh, Chuck, would you? Hit the green arrow. Just like before, the door closes, the clamp shuts, the lens is going to be traced by the two white styluses. Actually, the, the, the white stylus is formerly known as white styluses. They're a little off-white now. But it's tracing the shape of the left side of the frame. And just like before, measuring the thickness of the lens to know exactly and precisely where to place the bevel so you have the least amount of edge thickness showing. Of which, look at that, Mo, you got none. None, I tell you. You have a um, plus lens, which magnify. They're thicker in the center. You got no edge thickness. But let's go ahead and take this block off. It's no longer needed. Pull that away. and use my hand-approved drying method. Throw up, up, up. Stay in your side. I'm going to, let's see. Oops, I'm coming apart. I'm coming over. Where should I stick this? I'm trying to find a place. Look, there's a little overlap there. So I'm going to stick that on there. Hopefully that will keep that together. Come down here to my lens. I'm going to put it in above that black dot. Turn the axis wheel to 175. And check the power of your lens. I am getting plus 250. Exactly halfway between 2 and 3. That's because the, oh, the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, starting at zero and going up in 0.25, also known as quarter step. So 0.25, 0.50, 0.75, 1. You're on the tenth rung of a ladder. You are far sided. So you need a two and a half doppers of magnification. That's why there is a plus sign there. Your lenses will magnify with your lenses off. Your everything far away is too small, so that's why your lenses will magnify. Once it's the correct size, we need to take away the fuzzy edges. That's what uncorrected astigmatism is, and you have two steps of astigmatism correction, also known as cylinder. That's why there's abbreviation CYL. So once everything is the right size, the two steps of astigmatism will make uncorrected astigmatism make sixes and eights look alike, or the letters P and F, but we're going to be able to identify all of that. We're going to check that now. We end up at plus two. That's because if you had two dollars and fifty cents and someone borrowed fifty cents, you would have two dollars left. We are two dollars in the black. The minus powers in the reds, the plus powers are in the black. Now, your left eye, you only need eight steps of nearsighted correction because you are far sighted, but you only need one step of astigmatism correction. Now, this last number, 175 and zero and 70. That is an arbitrary number between 0 and 180. These first two numbers are real values to be concerned with. It just tells us where to turn the fine tune knob for the astigmatism for your right eye and for your left. So a straight line is 0 to 90 to 180. We're going to turn the knob to 175 for the right eye just before the 90th meridian on, this, on the left eye. So I also wanted to mention this frame, the light force frame sells for 200. The invisible bifocal sells for $149.99. Transitions extra active and a progressive no line invisible bifocal is normally in gray and brown is $99. And the extra active green it is $129.99 until prices drop. Sorry, I got to charge more for that one, but that's, they charge me more. So I'm passing it along, passing the buck. And of course, the Crizal anti glare is $69.99 for a total of $549.97. Now, if I'm lucky, I will not drop the screw for the left lens. I got away with it on the right. Please don't let me drop it. If it bounces off this counter and falls on the floor, I'm charging you extra, Mo. I need to charge more for crawling around on the floor. Hopefully, none of that was out of focus. I saw that to move my camera. I can't see what you guys are watching. Quite honestly, I don't even care to watch. And I'm living it live. So, I'm going to tuck the lens in at the outside corner, push down at the thumbs. Uh, it's getting a little resistant, so let's do a little bit more lefty-loosey. Push down. Come on, give me a snap. Give me a snap. There we go. 
turn that around righty tidy check to make sure that it's closed all the way and it is go ahead and take this block off pull that away use the back of the hand drying method throw that into the bin let's see where we can stick this one now uh, there's a little bit of a gap there let's let's push that down it's getting there new lab older lab new lab older lab look at my older lab has a mini me to me i think they look like the snapchat emblem so oh where were we yeah your left lens so oh, plus two at 70 let's turn the fine tune knob to a 70 and put it in above the black dot check the power i didn't even have to move it because that's where we're at with two on your right eye plus 250 minus 50 is two we're starting off at plus two you have one step of astigmatism correction if all goes well we end up at plus 175 one one and a quarter 150 175 two man i couldn't have done a better job if i had cut these lenses myself so your pupillary distance is 34 for each eye the right and the left for a total of 68 i'm going to turn the card around take the pd stick against my thumb place it on your right lens and we hold it up to the left lens we're getting 68 if all the numbers were on there that is 68 millimeters so that is cut perfectly i want to chop check the optical centers make sure they're at 19. look at that 19. 19. this would be a good time for you guys to say in your head the kid is good i'll wait while you do it ready on the count of three the kid is good <laughs> so now this is the portion of every video that as i clean your lenses I mentioned that there's free shipping anywhere in the U.S. And, of course, uh, Beaumont, California is still in the U.S. But when you get these in the mail, Mo, there is a small chance that these could fit too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to be higher than the other. That's because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other. And I'm no different. I'm part of that 80% and I'll show you in just a moment. And then you can, guys can find out what color glasses I'm wearing tonight. But I'm going to get these in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter. Actually, that temple, let me adjust this. Let me adjust this. Yeah, now that's level. When I say make sure there's no wobble, I'm part of the 80%. When I take mine off and press down on the counter, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. That's right, for you. those of you keeping score at home, I'm wearing the Ray-Ban 2132 New Wayfarer, color 789, which is the punchline to my favorite kid's joke, why is 6 afraid of 7? Because 789. It's also the punchline to one of my favorite, uh, or the setup line for one of my favorite adult jokes, why is 6 afraid of 7? Because 7 is a registered 6 offender. Okay, alright, yeah, you moan, but you'll be telling it tomorrow. So I'm going to flip these over, make sure there's no wobble. Close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, that neither temple is askew. So this is what your lenses look like while they are clear. Now, I send out a selfie request in every package. Mo, I'd love for you to send me a picture, both with your lenses clear, and then maybe one outside showing them where they're dark. I also send out cleaning instructions, not only on your frame and lenses, but for uh, the premium microfiber cleaning cloth that I provide, the Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, your Crizal cleaning cloth, you're going to get them all but instructions on how to care for your case and all three cleaning cloths so those two will last you for years. No other seller on the internet does that, I am told. Now, I field test every cleaning cloth before I ship, so when you get this in the mail and you see the wrinkles in there, you know it works, Mo. You can't tell me that you can't clean your lenses with it because you just saw me do it. So this is what your lenses look like clear. Now, this is a good point. I am, you have the Transitions Extra Active. I am wearing the Transition Signature 7. My lenses retain about 3 to 5% hue while indoors. That is of the grayish color. You have the green. The extra active have 5 to 7%. So it's roughly 2% more while indoors. But while you're wearing it, no one can really see it. But the nice thing about the extra active is I will tell you as I demonstrate. As you can see, let me put that in my little transitions box. Make sure it's sitting up the right or I'll just hold it. As you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken all the way. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Mo, this is important. Pay attention. All transition lenses will get dark on day one and continue to darken 
Every day for the first couple weeks are exposed to the sun. After that, they'll work for years at maximum performance. The only time the Transition Signature 7 lenses like I have won't work is if you're behind the windshield of a car. That's because your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays so your dashboard doesn't crack from sitting in the sun all day. However, the Transition's Extra Active that you got, Mo, will get about 30 to 50% dark behind a car. Now, they're also temperature sensitive, meaning they won't get as dark when it's 85 and above than they will when it's 85 and below but I remind everyone that when it's 100 degrees outside you're miserable they're miserable nobody works 100% when it's 100 degrees outside having said that your extra active lenses will get darker in hotter weather it's designed for extra active people so that's the nice thing about the extra active now if you have a convertible or a motorcycle the regular lenses will darken the regular transition 7 and of course these will too but this time of year when it's cold weather these will get dark fast i just don't know what the temperature is in beaumont california so that's the first time they've been activated they look like the ray-ban g15 lenses of which i've got <sighs> some here that are dusty that's pretty good isn't it they look like the ray-ban G actually wait is this a gray lens where's green where's a green lens when you need one all right that one's brown that definitely doesn't look brown but that's what the extract of brown would look like someone give me a green lens Anything over here by the handstone gets dusty. That's all this dust that you see here. Yep, I'm going to wipe that on my pants now. So, yes, now we've got green. That Transitions Extra Active Green or Transition Signature 7 Green looks like the graphite green lenses of the Ray-Ban sunglasses. That's what they were trying to match. They're still new. That's why they cost more. They're just not mass-produced. It's only made in one lab, and everything costs a little bit longer. I mean, costs more and takes longer, by the way. The Extra Active Green take two weeks. So I do thank you for your patience, Mo. The extra active gray and brown I can have ready in three to five days. But as you can see, they're starting to lighten as I keep running my mouth. So if you've liked what you've seen, please subscribe to my YouTube channel so you can see more. Or if you hated what you've seen, please subscribe so you can get more abuse. Now you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram as freeprescriptionlenses.com. You can email me or on Twitter it's freerxlenses because I can't have a long username. You can email me um, on the contact me button on the website if you have a question about what I can or can't do. If there's a frame out there you want that's not listed, I'll do my best to get it listed for you. And I definitely have access to it. I just don't have every Ray-Ban, Polo, Oakley, Versace frames listed on the website. I've just picked up Silhouette and BMW, so I'll get those listed too. But if you have a question, you can also email me directly at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. You can also, I prefer, I say that, I ask that if you have a question or comment, leave it in the comment section below because someone else can read that question a year or two from now as these videos stay out there. And they will learn from your inquisitive nature. They may not have thought to ask that question so that they can learn just by scrolling down through the comments. But Mo in Beaumont, California, I thank you for your patience on getting these Transitions Extra Active Green Lenses with Crizal Anti-Glare made for your Ray-Ban 6286 color 2509 in the 54 eye size. And now everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that love and feeling back to glasses. Thank you.